Hi, Twowers. But wait, what is a Twower? And are you guys really still Twowers if you've forgotten your identity after so many days without reassurance? So first of all, thanks for 150 million views. Secondly, I think Twow needs to be a lot simpler from here on out. Recently, I've given you a lot of complex prompts and prizes in the hopes of making the show interesting, but I think it's actually more confusing than interesting, so I'll try to stick to easy to understand stuff from now on. That means the convoluted prize for Twow9 is going to be replaced. Here's the new prize. The top 10 of Twow9 get to fill in these blanks to create the Twow11 prompt, like Mad Libs. It'll be the first collaborative prompt. But before we can distribute those prizes, we have to find out who earned them. The ninth Twow prompt was, write a response of up to 10 words that completely changes meaning when you take out the stuff in parentheses. Which of the 55 remaining Twowers addressed the prompt the best? Well, 447 voters cast 579 votes. By the way, remember that Twow 8 prize being guessing what your Twow 9 score would be and then getting a big boost if you guessed really close? I don't know how it happened, but 3 of the Twow 8 top 10ers guessed within half a percent of the correct answer, so they're getting at least 16% bonuses. I really didn't think that was even remotely possible. With that being said, the winner of Twow 9 won with 77.46%. Was it you? Psst, it probably wasn't you. Like, a 98.18% chance. Anyway, the winner was Chi Chi Nitz, who said, Parentheses are always used as tools in math and literature, which also reads as, Parents are way too lit. It looks like we've got another self-referential response. And what definition of lit are you going by? I mean, we've got kids watching, I think. I don't know how old you guys are. You might be thinking, that doesn't sound like a number one entry. And you might be right. It's just that Chi Chi Nitz's raw score was 59.90%, and they guessed their score would be 60.27%, which is super close. That's so close, they got a 17.56% boost, which is almost game-breakingly large. Let's show the top 10 and don't scream, don't scream! I just changed the leaderboard up a bit, so you see 10 responses per screen instead of 20. And now you can see everybody's voter rating distribution. Left is good and right is bad. I know that's flipped from what you're used to seeing, but I thought this more closely resembles what an actual vote looks like, with the best letters listed first. And also this lowercase sigma means standard deviation. So, um, it kind of looks like the top three all got into the top three because of their massive boosts due to crazily accurate guesses. I feel bad for you, SpicyMan33, because you got the highest raw score, but got pushed all the way down to fourth place. I was thinking about this for a while, and I decided that I didn't want leaderboards like this, where the size of the prize, rather than the quality of the responses in the voters' eyes, determines who's at the top. I gotta stick to my word for the Twow 9 leaderboard, but from now on, I don't think I'll have percentage boosts anymore. That way, number one really means number one. Doesn't that just sound more fair? By the way, that's also why I like Twow 9's prize so much. It doesn't directly alter the leaderboard. Also with this prize, SpicyMan33 and others don't actually lose anything prize-wise from falling from first to fourth. And also, John Dubuk, your poetic response about Moonlight would have earned you 17th place, but your 19% boost pushed you into second. So this is the third time you've gotten second place. You've got a pretty severe case of silver medal-itis. Ping Pong Cup Shots? You thought tests were easy, but blood tests make you queasy. Perhaps a raw ranking of 18th would be low enough to make you feel queasy, but a massive boost of 18% into 3rd place makes everything suddenly feel easy. Steve Minecraft 46? Like Chi Chi Nitz, your response referred to itself. However, your high placing shows that you might be wrong when you said your response wasn't clever or funny. Both SpicyMan33 and Tak Ajnan were skeptical about online discussions, Though, it also seems like SpicyMan33 thinks the non-spicy taste of pure onion isn't so great. Tech Ajnan, it's true that the apostrophe you typed in your response didn't show up. That's because you used a special apostrophe instead of the standard one. I would give you a 5% bonus, but you said you didn't want to take someone else's spot because of a small mistake. Also, try not to include special characters in your responses. I try to convert them when I can, but it's impossible to check for everything. Sam Billinge, I am impressed you managed to split the word sledge into five parts. And I also realized that if you were unlucky, both states of the sentence could happen to you at the same time. The Futek hacker, who had the second highest raw score, said, 
the woman was demanding food and went to Shelley's diner, which could also read as the man was dead and went to hell. I wonder if that man was the woman's waiter at the diner. I mean, if she was demanding enough, she might have killed him. Taupone H6427, you held the record for the most sets of parentheses in the top 10. 8. It was either I forgave her after she farted at the track meet, or I gave her a heart attack. I have to admit, reading heart attack was not so easy the first time through. Finally, Pokemon Manic 3595 gave us a before and after story. Or at least I like to think of it that way. Before, everyone watched the clown with unruly laughter. After, everyone watched as the clown was charged with unruly manslaughter. Cool, right? But there's 45 others who still don't know how well they did, so we'd better get to the rest of the leaderboard. Out of the 55 total contestants, you need to be shelved in the top 44 to be renewed into TWOW 10. The bottom 11 will be fined with so many late fees they die. Right now, 30 books have been returned, but we're still unsure where the other 25 books are, and there's only enough room on the shelf for 14 books left. Let's see which books will end up in the lost but never found. It looks like our library must endure the painful loss of 11 invaluable books. While their last words were a bit two-faced, we know their true intentions were only one-faced, to produce awesome twow responses. Just like some of the words they wrote, these precious twowers must sadly be placed between parentheses, now optional for twow to continue. Goodbye. To summarize, here's who's still in and who's eliminated. If you're eliminated, you won't be able to send me any more responses for upcoming TWOW Season 1 prompts. With 44 TWOWers left, you guys are now in the top 9%. Okay, so Joseph Howard and Greentree had the most controversial responses, which were eerily similar. They both hinged on the idea of omitting commas, and they talk about serving loved ones as meals. You two should start a restaurant, but only accept parties of two or more customers because, well, you know. On the other end of the spectrum, LEGO TD61 had the least controversial response. Looking at all of 129 as a whole, the number of sets of parentheses ranged from a low of 1, which 5 Twowers did, to a high of 12, which that commenter did. It's the only one that couldn't fit, so here's it in full. The average was 3.56. So you guys may be wondering, did it help to pack in as many P sets as possible, or did that just clutter and confuse? Well, the answer is just whatever. I mean, that's one of the lowest R-square values I've ever seen. So really, any number of P-sets is as good as any other. Enough boring analysis already. Let's get into 1210 already. Ooh, double digits. I said earlier I wanted to make prompts simpler. So here's my 10th 12 prompt for you remaining 44 hours. Make us feel sympathy for something we would otherwise never feel sympathetic towards. I think that is a lot easier to understand than the last two prompts. Remaining 2 hours. You've got to respond to this tantalizing prompt in 10 words or fewer by submitting a YouTube PM to me by April 10, 2016 at 10pm UTC. And top 10ers of TWOW9? Don't forget to type your word with the correct part of speech so we can work together to create a TWOW11 prompt! See you all in TWOW10A! Oh, one last thing. Michael and I are going to VidCon 2016, which is June 23 to 25, 2016 in Anaheim, California. Maybe we'll see some of you there. We don't really have any plans yet, but I thought maybe some of us could do a BFDI simulation with real people. It'll become more certain as the time draws closer. Okay, that's it. Bye!